All right, everybody, uh, just want to say hello there. Uh, I'm Mike Walter, and I'm here with Umberto Duran, and I want to thank everybody for joining us, and, and we're really excited to be a part of such an amazing event. Um, I've had a chance to take in a few of the sessions today and also watch the keynote address, and uh, and it just so happens uh, Umberto asked me if I could be a part of this today, and I was excited to do it, but I was also going to be in the forest. I'm up in Northern California in the uh, Lake Tahoe area. So looking at all these trees over the last few days has really kind of embedded in me the importance of today. And uh, I'm delighted to be here with Umberto, who is the head of our features division at CGTN America. And he can kind of explain some of the programming that we do. I always say that uh, there's ideas, people, and execution. I guess I'm more on the execution side because I'm on air, but he's kind of our ideas guy. And he can talk about... Uh, our involvement, and we can also talk a little bit about the Global Action Initiative. Totally. Um, hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Umberto. I'm, I'm based in Washington. Uh, we are part of CGTN. This is our office it's here in Washington. It's a medium office, 250 people. We mainly cover news, uh, but we do have a very strong lineup of, of uh, long-form shows. We have America Now, which is, covers mostly everything from Alaska all the way to Patagonia. Uh, try to be very heavy on social issues. Of course, the environment is one of our heavy, heavy things. Uh, then we have Big Story, which are very compelling documentaries. Uh, again, same, same kind of topics. A lot of things related to forest, because we think it's important for our, for our viewers. And then we have Full Frame, where Mike is our, our face. Uh, that's a talk show, but it has very heavy component of long form too. And I'm sure Mike can explain a little bit better what uh, uh, Full Frame is. Yeah, Full Frame. I've been uh, host of Full Frame now for eight years. Uh, it's been one of the shining moments of my career. It's been amazing. In 2016, we won a national Emmy uh, in a category where we were up against uh, 60 Minutes and Dateline. Uh, so that was really a, quite an honor. But what's happened with the program over the years is we've kind of morphed and changed and, and adapted. And one of the things that I really like that Umberto injected into the show is that we now focus on visionaries. And we talk to a lot of people in this space uh, who are trying to do their best to, to save the planet, to deal with uh, climate change, the rainforest, uh, so many issues out there. Uh, and, and it's been a, a delight. Uh, one of the people that I interviewed uh, for the program just a few months ago was the ambassador from Ecuador to the United States, uh, Ambassador Baki. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with her, she was very instrumental in trying to raise funds for the Yasuni area and save the rainforest from exploration by oil companies. And one of the things that she did, she did a TED talk on this, is they, they brought an oil derrick uh, to New York City and placed it right in this pristine park uh, in the heart of Manhattan and people were going ballistic. And, and the point was, if, if you care about this, you should also care about this. And she showed uh, the, the rainforest and the importance of it. And I think that's the one thing that I love about CGTN is we spend our time trying to connect the world. I don't see us as uh, you know being from the United States or Peru or Brazil, uh, we're all global citizens. And one of the things that happens in general news is um, it's like consuming stuff with a fire hose. You know, There's so many big stories. You know. COVID-19 uh, here in the United States, of course, uh, the January 6th hearings, uh, and the list goes on and on and on, mass shootings. But the thing is, there are these pressing issues that are so important, and they're global issues. And, uh, and so one of the great interviews I got a chance to do uh, late last year in October was I got to go to Iceland and really illustrate how you really can uh, address climate change and everyone can get involved in it. I spoke to the prime minister there, and, uh, you know, here she is t dealing with twin crises, really. I mean, COVID and climate change. And she's addressing both of them in, in a really dramatic fashion, is, as is the people of, of Iceland. And one of the great places we got to go to is Akaveri, fourth largest city in Iceland, but it's almost totally carbon neutral. It's amazing. They're, they're siphoning out the methane out of the, uh, the dumps and using that to fuel the buses. Every aspect uh, from, you know, recycling to uh, composting, you name it. They're, they're implementing all of it. And it's amazing what's happening in that community. And I think we have a little video taste. Uh, is that right, Umberto, that we can share with folks? 
yes, we do. We do. Uh, if uh, we can roll that video. Creating a market for the most vulnerable. Hey, in the Chinese market, ah, Peng Zhang, these guys, ah, Jing Hao, or Hao, 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 buy, 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 And a dedicated team working on the ground. If there is any problem, we, whether it is the chief to check it or the other departments or departments, we can check it out and find out what the reason is. It will help them more effectively. A new generation of climate leaders seek solutions to protect the planet. Ah, because we have set the Paris Climate Accord. The Paris Climate Accord is now only 38 years old. 这个碳中和的目标是需要我们这一代年轻人发挥自己的聪明才智去实现的。Inspired by the passion and dedication of scientists and innovators before them， 就是我到了沙漠里面，开着一个，在沙漠里面活上一棵树一个草，就像爱护他们，就像爱护我的小孩一样。And committed to carrying on the spirit of environmental stewardship. 亲密的接触，然后去了解电池，然后通过接触来产生情感，然后呢，因为有了这种情感，人们才会有动力去保护电池。Sustainable Global Action Initiative 2022. Okay, perfect. That that was that was perfect because.、Um, What really we wanted to talk about is, is this, this big project that we have every year. Two years ago,、uh, we started doing global action initiative.、Um, it's、uh, how do media can have a role on、uh, solving some of these issues, not by doing it by itself, but maybe showcasing、um, something we call、uh, solution-driven content. With how do we sh、uh, show? What other people in different parts of the planet are doing to to solve some issues.、Uh, the first year,、uh, we did、uh, poverty alleviation, which is uh, something uh, they end up being super compelling、uh, because of the examples of things that happen in, not only in China but in Africa, South America. Uh, uh, so I think it, it was one of those、um, very heavy emotional. Um, um, Content、uh, on the first year, and the second year, of course,、uh, we did、uh, climate change, which is something that you just see now.、Uh, climate change、um, is one of those things that moves everybody.、Um, everybody's worried about. I have two kids.、Um, that's something that always comes up.、Uh, how, what do we do? How do we how do we fix it? How do we make changes?、Um, and sometimes it's, it's, it's just seeing how other people in different parts of the planet. Are reacting to these and coming up with solutions that、uh, other people can mimic or improve, and I think that's kind of the the mission of this、uh, branded content that we're calling Global Action Initiative. It's a whole week of coverage.、Uh, we try to bring as many influencers as we can into a studio. We sit、uh, prime ministers uh, with uh, presidents, with the science people. But also with just、uh, people who are working on the woods,、uh, etc., just so everybody can tell their opinion and 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 help present what they're doing, and then we can showcase that.、Um, and of course,、uh, as Mike was saying, he was had the chance to to be、uh, in Iceland last year.、Uh, very impressed by how powerful the 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 examples of of people、uh, trying to change.、Uh, The way they live, I think that was that was a good example of that. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting when you think about these big, big issues.、Uh, it almost creates like the fight or flight instinct in all of us,、uh, where we we look at it, we say, you know, this is just so enormous. Where do we even begin? And when it comes to the issue of poverty, it, it's it's an issue that that's 
throughout the world. And it's been accentuated, of course, by COVID-19. Um, but that's the, one of the things that I love about working at CGT in America. It's, it's a big topic. Mike, and we spend an entire week looking at it and addressing it. And I, and I defy you to find any other network that does what we do in that respect. And then to come back a year later and look at climate change, again, one of these enormous issues. But to look at different places on the planet, uh, Iceland being one example, where people are making strides and they are uh, actually identifying ways where they can address this issue. And instead of you feeling like, oh, this is just so huge, where do I go? What do I do? You can actually come away with some really positive feelings about how some places in the world are really addressing this and how there are obviously areas where we can improve, where we can take steps uh, that are really important. And of course, I think an offshoot of, of that this year is sustainability. And one of the things I, I like about our bosses is uh, Jungle Pin, who's the uh, basically our bureau chief in Washington, D.C., came up and was in the pod where all of the we have a talk show called The Heat, where he was talking to all the producers and, and, uh, and myself and just saying, you know, what, what do we tackle this year and kind of throwing out ideas. But but we don't look for something small. We look for something really big. And I think that's what's really nice about the whole week long effort at looking at, at a specific issue and really uh, taking our resources and devoting them. And, and we spend a lot of time on this. I can tell you last year and Umberto was in on these meetings, too. We'd have these sessions where everybody would come down. We'd have our, our digital people, our general news people, people from the heat. Uh, Umberto was there talking about all of the programs that he's involved in, our, our uh, promotions department, marketing. Everybody's involved in this. And we have these sessions where we kind of throw around ideas and we kind of hone in on, on how do we address this. And one of the things that we did, I thought that was really nice last year, Umberto, and maybe you can talk a little bit more about this is, we didn't just address these issues, but, you know, it was great. I watched one of the sessions earlier and it was about education and education about the rainforest and climate and talking about guardians of the globe, you know, that that basically you have to pass the baton to the next generation and get young people involved. And this is clearly an issue that they care about passionately. And so that was one of the things that I think in that meeting, it really came through that we really wanted to get a lot of voices of the young in, in our in our programming uh, as well, not just, you know, uh, prime ministers or, or experts, but also these young people, you know, at some point they take over uh, the stewardship of this planet. And I think they're pretty alarmed with, with uh, how we've done things so far and, and with good reason. Right. That, that was a, a really nice aspect of what happened uh, last year. We were able to, to work with the uh, multiple universities from different places. Uh, and, and some of those uh, young minds will coming up with solutions that are uh, simple, uh, but make a difference. We, we profile a, a, a PhD engineer who changed all the, all the systems in schools on how to uh, use their electricity. They move into a, a LED uh, lights. It seems like very minimal thing, but it changes dramatically the amount of energy those schools will use. And of course, that makes a difference uh, in, in, in the whole community uh, as that. Um, in China, we did this story about how to improve the, the seeds for, for improving crops. Uh, again, uh, because of the deserts, the, most of the sun will uh, basically eat up all the, all the, all the crops for, in that region. And, and because they have this spe special way to, to put all these uh, seeds in, in a square type that will protect the, the, the crop for that year. So I think those little things are the ones that uh, made the difference on, on, on that content. As Mike uh, was saying, this year we're, we're, we're focusing on uh, something we're called uh, sustainable. Uh, it, it, some argue that it's kind of similar uh, in terms of, of the, the, the urgency to, to move in that direction as a society. Uh, and I think we're finding uh, good elements, um, the stories that we're going to profile this November when this uh, new season comes up. We're planning to do uh, stories here in the U.S. Um, there's a, a, a coal mine here that is moving from coal to to uh, solar uh, energy, just just to, to give you an example, how to work in the manglers here in, in Maryland, uh, be more uh, 
close to to the seasons and how the salt water is affecting the the, the forest too. And what are we doing to, to change that? Uh, some things that we're doing here, um, same things. It's funny, but it's very similar to what's happening in, in as that in, in Africa, and we're trying to to make those those examples connect. So we're building a lot of um, stories around all these solution-driven uh, things that are affecting the way we we plan our our future and and think and how to make a. a uh, a more sustainable planet, of course. The interesting thing is, you know, we we do so much programming uh, design towards this uh, this year with full frame. As I mentioned, you know, went to Iceland, uh, you know, kind of the tip, and then we went to the the bottom. We went to Miami Beach and and saw how uh, climate change was impacting Miami Beach as well. They had a Aspen Ideas Festival there. And again, to Umberto's point, you know, we're, we're talking to a lot of people who are you know, raising the alarm bells, but we're also talking to people who are coming up with solutions. One of the people we profiled in full frame was a gentleman who's uh, gone into some of these really hard hit, depressed areas in the Northeast. And um, he's going to venture capitalists and approaching them and saying, look, you got to give us some money so that we can take these uh, places, these old buildings, retrofit them and get them with solar panels and, and move them towards green energy. And I think that's one of the great things about this is we're looking at all of these solutions. And, and to uh, Umberto's point, we're really excited about uh, one of the episodes this year that we'll have, uh, 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 which is going to talk about the three zero factory, white, the white tea industry, uh, low, low carbon community. And we'll go into detail on these. I'm just kind of reading them off right now. Uh, urban building, energy conservation and coal mine transformation. And, and this is really kind of a look at how China is really kind of... Uh, has such a holistic approach and, and approaching this from so many different angles. And it's really fascinating. And I thought maybe we could just, maybe I'll start with the first one, Umberto, and we can Please, kind of bounce back and forth. Yeah. So this three zero factory, I just wrote some notes uh, to myself here, so I'll refer to them. But the zeros uh, refer to zero pollution, zero carbon, and zero chemicals. And, and in, and in doing this three zeros, they're also aiming to achieve four 100%. So it's not just the three zeros, it's going in the other direction as well. 100% carbon neutral plant, 100% zero landfill plant, 100% water efficiency plant, and 100% green plant. And so they have these prototype factories that we'll be looking at, one in Beijing and the other in Guangdong province, that are actually transitioning to become zero factories. So uh, one of the plants uh, is a beverage company. And they have a goal to construct five domestic carbon neutral beverage demonstration facilities by 2025. And so uh, in addition to being a carbon zero factory, the products they are coming out with are gonna be environmentally friendly as well. It's uh, important to point out that the factories will also be equipped with solar uh, panels as well. So they'll be getting their energy through uh, green renewable energy sources. Um, so this is a really a, an important part of this documentary showing how um, you know, when it comes to sustainability, there are changes that you can implement. And in the case of these two factories, um, when you start looking at that and transitioning that across a, a country like China and around the world, I mean, this is going to be remarkable long term. Totally. And, and I, I want to mention that because when you watch the video, it, it, the whole thing is on the dark because they work with no lights and everything is moved by robots. So when you see visually what you're presented to, it, it is just visually, it's very, very compelling. Uh, I want to move into, into the, the tea industry. This, this is one of those things that uh, connects with the, also with the fighting poverty. Um, and I'm not sure if, that, if you're, you're familiar with the, how, uh, how heavy uh, social media is in China. But what happens with uh, some of these people who work on the field, they created uh, social media accounts and people will follow them throughout their day. And, and by that became kind of a, um, a celebrity, if you, if you wish, and you're, you're, you're uh, selling your products and in, 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 in live you're showing uh, what are the prime, uh, uh, the prime leaves that they're gonna sell or, or what, what, what should go higher in price or, even uh, you can go into a bidding war, uh, all happening in, in social media. Uh, uh, and, and also that has created a, a big push 
in terms of um, um, making that place, um, uh, we have more resources, etc. So I think that's that's something I think that for the rest of the world will be a, something that you haven't seen before. And then there's a, a low carbon community. This is in Jiangsu province. Uh, it's taking advantage of all these changes that we're seeing with technology, you know, AI, um, you know, big data, cloud computing, uh, the Internet of Things. And so it comes up with this comprehensive, uh, advantageous energy environment uh, and using the digital revolution to really kind of spark things and, and drive it along. Um, so it's going to show how green energy projects, also uh, multi-directional applications, uh, we're talking about energy efficiency management, uh, energy trading, carbon trading, bringing all of these uh, together. And uh, you're going to see this carbon zero demonstration city. Um, and it's it, it also employing, of course, solar as well. So it's, it's kind of fascinating to see how all of the, the digital revolution kind of harnessing all of that as well to bring about uh, an environmental revolution in a sense. Okay, great. Look, it looks like we hit our, our time. Uh, um, now is, is, is the moment to show you what uh, the, our episode last year called uh, Zero Hour China uh, looked like. Uh, this will have some of those things that we're talking about. Um, and it, it, if you guys can please uh, roll that video, it will be super nice. All our efforts ultimately serve to answer the question of how can the youth do to address climate change. These days, we've done lots of things. We speak up as a young generation. We are the future researchers, experts, officials, and scientists. We are not speaking for one time. We are exactly the future of our time. Standing on the intergenerational stage to addressing climate change issues is of a right but more of our responsibility. I firmly believe that this talk won't be the end but a time for our journey on tackling the climate change. Climate change is a global challenge and the youth will be the most affected by the challenge in the near future. The International Youth Summit on Climate Change brings young minds together where they brainstorm how they can contribute to addressing the climate change. With the rise of global environmental problems, Tsinghua University established an international class on global environment in 2011. The objective was to expand environmental professional knowledge. Cheng Haosheng is an undergraduate. Okay,在清华的环境学院的全球环境国际班，然后现在刚大三了。清华环境学院其实本来是一个非常重工科的学院，就注重啊，可能以前国家很多污染治理的需求，所以我们也很多专家去做大气、土壤还有水等等的污染
Chang's love of sports and nature is another reason he cares about the environment. He enjoys working out. He also likes the harmonious experience that comes from performing in the Art Troop Military Band. All of this adds to why he hopes to one day be an environmental diplomat. Tang Yuan is a graduate of Tsinghua's School of Environment. He then earned a master's degree in environmental studies in a joint program between Tsinghua and Yale University. Today he works with the UN. He's an example of a Chinese student who's incorporating Western concepts into his sphere of environmental knowledge. So 来自和美国的同学啊、同行、朋友们的交流，以及我在美国的所见所闻等等，呃，我觉得都是一种广义上的学习，让我更了解这个国家，来了解这样一个与中国不同的国家，他们是在这个环境领域以及在更广泛的领
要坐在正中间这个口上，然后锯齿保持一条线。这个是这样一个角度，这样放下去的。我看一下啊。嗯，今天这个活动是叫滇池关爱日。Wing Fei is doing just that. His environmental protection organization sponsors events that draw citizens together and draw their attention to their natural surroundings. Like this paddleboarding excursion on Diangchi. Through this kind of intimate contact, to understand the water, and then through the contact, to create emotion. Then, because of this emotion, people will have the courage to protect the water. So, we hope that through this kind of intimate contact with the water, to draw people together and the water and the water. 距离，建立一种情感的连接，从而促使人们去保护电池，保护环境。Mm-hmm. Meng is also what is known as a river chief. One of the keys to cleaning Jiangxi Lake has also been managing the 84 tributaries and 36 rivers that enter into it by creating sewage blocking systems. This allows Jiangxi to receive fresh water that helps it to self-purify. We, as a director, have a responsibility to follow our responsibility. Of course, as a health organization, we hope to cross every stream in Kunming. 然后，因为你只有实地的去看，实地的去感受，你才能够发现现实当中的一些问题。While challenges remain, Li sums up their efforts to restore the lake on a positive note. 应该说，三十年来吧，三十年来的最好水质。World. The local people have joined forces with nature to push back the desert and carved out a path of paradise amidst all the sand. Tong Shi Ming went to college and graduated with a degree in forestry. But instead of running away, he returned home in 1991 to put his desert control knowledge to use. One of the biggest challenges of living in the Tengger Desert is transportation. The government was in 1954. The government was in 八月一号通车以后呢，就这个铁路呢，经常被我们这个我们这边呢西北风比较多，经常刮风，一刮风呢就整个黄沙呢就是漫天到处乱飞，整个就把铁路给阴埋了，使包来铁路不能畅通无阻Tong joined the government scientific research team for desertification control. Desertification is the degradation of drylands that happens as a result of climate change and worsening droughts, as well as human activities like overgrazing. 
With limited funds to solve the problem, Tang experimented with several methods until he came up with a simple yet innovative solution, a grass grid. Tang Tung the roots are 8 to 10 times longer than the grass itself, and they reach deep enough to find underground water. Tong's team has a research arm that has attracted a new generation of scientists and researchers. Staff here carry out experiments to refine the grass grid method. 十，嗯，我们草方隔离种植的植物呢，经过就是多种方案选择，一般是银条跟油蒿。那么这两种植物呢，我们可以发现它的这个树形分叉的比较多，基底部，尤其像银，呃，油蒿，它然后分叉比较
have committed themselves to realizing China's goal of carbon neutrality by 2060. 我现在的研究课题是研发下一代高比能的电池，能够让我们的电池它的寿命更长，成本更低，呃，续航里程更长。然后装好之后，做纽扣电池的装配，因为我们现在是在做下一代呃锂电池的开发，所以它的核心还是材料的创新。所以我们在做完呃材料的研发之后，是要在小型的纽扣电池里面先做一个呃一个验证，然后等在小型的纽扣电池里面可以之后，我们再去放大到更大型的软包电池和电池组里面做一个相关的测试。呃，因为我们提出碳中和，碳中和的目标距现在其实只有三十八年了。这个碳中和的目标是需要我们这一代年轻人发挥自己的聪明才智去实现的。从我听说双碳目标的提出以来，我就觉得自己未来个人事业是紧密与双碳目标相结合的。It's not just students in the sciences dedicating themselves to this goal. Wang Tong Nan is a student filmmaker at Tsinghua. Uh, because I'm a student of media communication, and I have my own ideas for filming. I'm very interested in environmental issues. Hello. 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 I这段时间脑子里一直在想一个问题，因为我看到一些很多不环保的现象。我在想，如果地球就是像我们房间那么小的话，那人们所有对环环境所做的，那人们所有对环境所做的一些不环保的行为，比如说乱扔垃圾，
新能源这块，主要这块就是吸收新能源发展。嗯，比如讲在近期，我们这块这就是一个余光互补的那个光伏发电，那个分离发电，那等于我们就是更正跟后面提供一些咨询的服务。平时的维护，你像这个呃杂草，包括这些油污，对的，及时的把清理一遍。这个这个包括这个正常的一个光伏那个拆挂了，对，嗯，用户的。呃，光伏发电对用户也有造成呃很大的收益，对吧？就是一次性投资啊，它这个呃，就这个那个那个呃光伏发电过后，它那个余额就是用户剩下来的，等于用掉过后剩下来的电，就反馈到那个国家电网。另外一个就是从大的环境，嗯、呃，环保啊，这个节约能源，对吧？呃，节约那个化石能源，这确实起一个很大的作用。Yang Peng routinely visits construction sites to check on the phases of development. Today, he's in Tianzhan. This is our production line. 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 This is our p r o 这个哦，围栏围那个这个名字应该是没有问题了，对吧？没有问题的，这个。对，围栏围好，围、嗯、围好过后呢，这个名字应该。对对，一期二期，总共我们是一百二十兆瓦，年发电量大概在一点二亿度电。就跟那个核电相比啊，嗯，这个一期二期一百二十个兆瓦，就是全部发电过后，就是太阳能那个发电过后，能一年能减少十万吨的那个二氧化碳排放。对对。哎哎Wind power is also an important part of the new energy industry. Yang Peng and his colleagues, like Wang Shi, are continually conscious of the environment in their work. So, one is because it's mainly clean energy, so when we build in the process, for the environment, how many trees are there in our area? So, we have to keep it. So, if we build the wind power, when it's working, we have to consider the environment. 我们要考虑到，我们风机运行的时候，是周围也有那个相应的设置一些驱鸟器，防止这个鸟飞到风机中。这个我们从那个候鸟啊，一个迁徙通道都考虑，然后包括我们那个留鸟也要考虑，就是尽量就要少打扰他们的那个迁徙通道跟生存空间。我们经常到这边来嘛，就这个通道的话，因为它这个比较比较集中，对吧？在一起，所以我们巡护的时候啊，这个要要注意观看，特别是这个时候，是夏候鸟这个准备离开了，冬候鸟也准备过来的时候，所以这个时候我们巡护时候要看一下这个线路下面有没有鸟的穿越。As the climate crisis continues to pose pressing problems to China and the globe, Yang Peng and his team hope their efforts help provide a green lifeline for their city. In the Tanjir Desert, Tang Ximing tests a new grass variety for his grids. While in Yunnan province, Li Chongxin checks the water quality levels in Dianqi Lake. In Shenzhen, Zhang Shengjun collects data to find new ways to reuse rainwater. And at Tsinghua University, Cheng Haosheng immerses himself in his studies, preparing to be part of the next generation of researchers, scientists, and innovators tackling climate change.
Great. Uh, I, I want to start just by saying this is uh, part of, of uh, whole coverage. So uh, this episode was called Zero Hour China, but we had uh, another five. If you if you want to watch the rest, uh, they're in uh, Apple TV, CUTN, uh, now.com, uh, and you can see um, uh, all the episodes. We have one in the U.S., one in Africa and South America, one in Southeast Asia, and one in Europe. And it's kind of similar, meaning uh, a combination of students, uh, younger people bringing ideas with some stuff that it's a little more complicated than needed to have uh, more power to, to, to build. But uh, it's kind of kind of the same, and I'm hoping we, we can do the same uh, this year. So. Uh, so so I noticed, uh, Umberto, we've got uh, a couple of questions here. Uh, the first one's from Amelia. Uh, Hi, I have a question for the panel. How can programming like yours elicit a sense of urgency and a need to act? And I think one of the things that uh, from this, and I'd love to get your perspective too, Umberto, is when you look at it from a holistic standpoint, you know, there's so many different aspects of, of climate change. China being such a huge country um, has to address so many different issues. And it really, I think, uh, shows that there is a sense of urgency there. And, and uh, you know, when you look at the water and how uh, the man's talking about how the, the water quality's improved, but there's still more that can be done. Um, and then the young kid doing that film, I thought the film was great, where he turned it in the world into a small room and everything's heating up and he's sweating and stuff. Really, I think, shows that there is a sense of urgency. You know, we have to act. And I think that's one of the great things about this documentary. It shows we have to act, but we have to act in kind of a holistic fashion. We've got to address so many different issues. Right, 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 totally. Um, there is this other question of, of all the topics to focus on why we're putting spotlight in and sustainable. Um, I think it's kind of the same. Uh, we have to move from um, complaining about how we're living to how are we going to fix this. And I think it's a, in a way we can see that what other people are doing, I think that will help uh, promote a, a very healthy uh, line of solution for almost everything. Um, uh, we also talk to, to, to many people in politics. Um, it's not easy to make changes just because um, energy is, is mainly the source of all these and moving from, from I would say, uh, the traditional way to a, a more sustainable way it's, it's complicated, but I think in many places, we're starting to see how that can change. And, and, and we're hoping to showcase those characters that can tell that story in the next uh, round of, of, of documentaries we're doing. And I think the important thing, you know, like when we went to Iceland and we focused on Akareri and we talked to the mayor there, you know, they've got all the same issues that every other city has, you know, trying to address this issue and that issue, but they, they put climate change uh, first and foremost, and uh, and really the, the people are, are demanding it in a sense too. And I think this is the other thing it empowers. I think this type of programming empowers our viewers to say, you know, look, we, we need to address this and perhaps put more pressure on their own elected officials to, to try and take some steps to address these critically important issues. Because, you know, even though it's not, it, it's kind of like a runaway train that's coming in your direction. You may not see it off in the distance, but it's still coming and, and we have to address this issue. And the other thing we, we find out is, is mostly about planning, right? How do we make a list of the, the things that are more urgent and how do we tackle those uh, in a way that it's, it's, it's possible? Um, I think that the examples uh, from some of these um, sometimes are just simple, but some require more, more investment and uh, more effort uh, in terms of uh, taxes, in terms of... Uh, uh, technology, uh, and again, I think those elements need to play a role, and it's good to, to hear from other places so you can so you can mimic. And uh, we're getting close to the end here. I think that's our, our final question, so I guess we should probably uh, uh, wrap things up because we don't want to go over. One thing that Alberto's good at <laughs> yeah, is producing and making sure we hit the clock at the right time, but I just want to thank <laughs> All the people that have joined us today, because I know uh, one of the, I watched one of the panels earlier today, and I guess I didn't do this. They, they say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, if you're in your pajamas and ready to go to bed, uh, thanks for staying up late with us, because we know we have viewers from all over the world that are joining us today. And we want to thank you. 
And also want to encourage you, uh, if you will, to to sample our products because we do have a lot of great programming out there and uh, and we're doing some, I think, very impressive things on these important issues. Same here. Very, very worried about the planet and happy to to you know, connect. And if you, I'm here in the chat, if you need more information about our network, happy to share with you. I'm very proud of the content we produce. Uh, and if uh, more viewers can join us, uh, it make me very happy. All right. Thanks again for uh, tuning in today. Certainly appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye.